Hello fellow cyborgs and welcome to another Hindsight is 2020 video where I tell you about some books that I have recently reread. I have recently reread three works by Black authors and I wanted to talk to you about them. The first book I reread was A Lesson Before Dying by Ernest J. Gaines. This takes place in the 1940s. This is about Jefferson, a young man who is wrongfully accused of committing murder during a robbery. He is sentenced to execution. Jefferson's godmother begs Grant, the local teacher, to visit Jefferson and talk to him and help him earn some of the dignity that was taken away from him during his trial. At the very beginning of this book, you hear about Jefferson's trial and that his lawyer decided to compare him to a hog to try to appeal to the jury members not to sentence him to death because it would just be like killing a hog. I did not understand this book a lot when I first read it. I first gave it three out of five stars, but the things that I remembered most were how angry and cruel Grant was to the people in his life, his students, his aunt, Jefferson's grieving godmother, and I didn't really understand why he would act that way. Similarly, I didn't understand why Jefferson was so uncooperative and uncommunicative to his godmother when she visited him in jail, but I am relieved to note that I have grown in my education of myself and I understood this a lot more. I could understand why Jefferson was not able to take himself out of his horrifying circumstances just to act cheerful for his family members. I was able to understand the pressure that Grant was under and the fork in the road he had to decide whether he would seek freedom, seek a life that had more choices and abandon his community or stay behind in a community that he didn't have faith would ever improve. At one point in the novel, Grant also talks about the burden set on the shoulders of black men that goes all the way to slavery. The idea that you weren't able to save us, your women and children from this life of slavery. You weren't the strong black men that we needed you to be to save us. And that legacy still remaining on the shoulders of black men in their communities that are still segregated and constantly oppressed by the white society. I also picked up on a couple instances of colorism that's discussed in here, which I found just really interesting. So I enjoyed this a lot more upon rereading and I'm really glad that I kept it on my shelves. I have since given this four out of five stars and I highly recommend it. Upon urging from a commenter, I decided to reread Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I listened to this on audiobook since I did not have my physical edition anymore and I also thought that listening to the audiobook might improve things. And good news it did. The narrator pronounced the main character name is Ifemelu and Obinze, so I think I might try saying it that way, even though I've previously heard people call her Ifemelu. So this is primarily Ifemelu's story about her immigration to America, her experiences there, and her decision to emigrate back to Nigeria. This story is woven in and out through periods of her time and kind of framed within a beauty parlor as she's spending hours and hours getting her hair braided in preparation for her journey back to Nigeria. Obinze has been a a huge part of her life for so much of her life. And at the beginning of the story, we learn that they have had a falling out. And throughout the story, one of the subplots is learning how that happened. Intermixed with this timey-wimey narrative and figuring out what happened between Ifemelu and Obinze, we also get many, many small discussions about race in America, race in Africa, and how those things intersect. We hear about the struggles of immigration. We hear about white liberals who think that they understand race and yet act completely differently to black people, even if it's in an overly positive way than they would to anybody else. We hear about the issues of hair texture and the issues of colorism and immigration and trying to find a legitimate job when you are an immigrant from Africa. My initial complaints, and I did not enjoy this very much when I first read it, was that it was poorly organized, it was confusing, and overly complex. This book is quite long, it's at least 500 pages, and it felt like there was just so much going on in here that there wasn't one true direction for the story. Upon rereading, I don't think that's necessarily an unfair assessment. However, I recognize that so much of the intricate, small little discussions on race in America and in Africa were had in ways that were too subtle for me to pick up on the first time that I read it, when I wasn't aware of a lot of these concepts. And I do think that it's the sort of story that will improve upon rereading. I also remember not connecting with Ifemelu or Abinze the first time that I read it, and this second time I was able to empathize with them a lot more. So I definitely enjoyed this more upon rereading, so I'm pleased that I did give it a second chance. However, I am torn on is this a good book to give someone who wants to start exploring race and fiction, 
or is it not? A part of me thinks that this book will introduce to them a lot of topics about race that they might not have thought about if they are a white person who never had to think about it before. But another part of me thinks that a lot of these subtle messages will go over their heads if they're not familiar with these topics. Overall though, I upgraded this to a three out of five star instead of two, and I am really glad that I gave it a second chance. I do also recommend the audiobook. I preferred that experience more than reading the physical book. And finally, I reread Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. This was and is my favorite Morrison so far, and it was really fun to listen to the audiobook this time. The audiobook is narrated by Toni Morrison, which is a pro and a con in my opinion. Toni Morrison has a lovely speaking voice and I could listen to her talk all day. However, she doesn't really act the parts. She doesn't really do different voices for the different characters. So in certain dialogue exchanges, I got lost as to who was speaking what lines. But let me backtrack and tell you what the story is about. This is one of the few novels that Morrison wrote with a main male protagonist. His name is Milkman Dead. This is the story of Milkman growing up. It takes him a long time for him to emotionally mature way past into adulthood. He has to rethink all of the assumptions he's made of his family members as he discovers more and more about his family heritage. The thing I love about Song of Solomon is that though you definitely would say that Milkman is the main character, it becomes more evident, especially in the second part of the book. This book is definitely interested in exploring all of his family members. And I absolutely love when we have side characters who are given weight, who are given space to be individuals. I loved learning about his sister, First Corinthians. I loved learning about his mother, Ruth. I especially loved learning about his aunt, Pilot. Through this novel is the thread of the legend of the flying African, the idea that you could grow wings and escape from slavery. And in fact, the first image of the novel is a man wearing wings, jumping from the top of a building and dying by suicide. The magical realism elements in here are subtle and they just add an extra bit of, I don't know, I guess just magic to the story. This time reading around, I was able to pick up on the references of the Birmingham Four and Emmett Till. I believe Milkman is born in the 30s and this book ends in the 60s. So it was interesting to see Morrison write about that and integrate true historical events into this fictional novel. I don't think that I did as close of a reading as I maybe would have wanted to on my reread of Song of Solomon. That is the tendency with me with audiobooks. I don't tend to be able to analyze the text as well when I'm listening with my ears as opposed to reading with my eyes, but I did still enjoy learning about these characters and remembering all of the details of this plot that I had previously forgotten. This still by far remains my favorite Morrison, though I am still interested in reading more from her bibliography that I haven't yet read to see if anyone can contend with Song of Solomon. I rated this five out of five stars the first time and it remains a five star read for me now. So those are three books that I have recently reread that I definitely gained a lot more from upon rereading. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Toni Morrison novel is and if you have any other recommendations recommendations from Adichie or Gaines for me to read. Thank, thank, thank you for watching and until next time, read more Black authors and continue to be lovely.